Hello, welcome to Movie Summaries. Today we are summarizing a 2011 action thriller movie called Limitless. Fair warning, there are spoilers in this summary. Enjoy, and be sure to subscribe to watch more videos weekly, and hit like. Our main character, Eddie Mora, is standing on the ledge of a skyscraper. Behind him, men can be heard pounding on the door, and they don't seem too happy with him. We learn that Eddie got involved with a substance that made him exceptionally smart. The movie then skips back to where the story began, before he took the drugs. Eddie was an aspiring writer with a book contract, but no book. He was broke and struggling to put words on paper. Oh, and his girlfriend, Lindy, broke up with him. The two go to lunch together, where she breaks it off because of his lack of job or money and overall lifestyle. Eddie takes this as a huge surprise and reveals that he's been considering proposing, to which Lindy remarks that it worked so well for him the first time, referring to his brief first marriage to Melissa. The two part ways. On his way out, he runs into Melissa's brother, Vernon, who looks like he's doing much better than Eddie. He offers to take him out and catch up. When Eddie asks about what Vernon is doing these days, Vernon offers up a clear little pill called NZT. He claims has gone through clinical trials and is FDA approved. He tells Eddie that it makes people smarter and more efficient by allowing them to access 100% of their brains. He gives one of the pills to him as a parting gift. Eddie refuses to take it at first, but seeing as the street price is $800 per pill, Vernon insists he not be ungrateful. Eddie shoves the pills in his pocket, but then decides that he has nothing left to lose and takes the pill to see what happens. As he is walking up the steps to his apartment, he runs into his landlord's wife, who berates him for being late on the rent, again. However, Eddie isn't really hearing much of what she's saying as the effects of the pill start to take place. Suddenly, everything around him becomes brighter and his senses feel heightened. He notices tiny details he never would have noticed before and it seems as though he has an out-of-body experience. When he finally comes back to reality, his entire demeanor changes. He cuts off the woman, asking what really upsets her so much about him. He points out the law school book in her bag and offers some tips on completing her essay. The entire woman's attitude towards him changes as she becomes more friendly and open. She takes him back to her apartment, where they work on her paper together, and do some other things together too. Talk about a fast rebound. Afterward, Eddie goes back to his own apartment and cleans the place from top to bottom. Oh, and he also writes over 90 pages of his book in one sitting. The next morning, however, he wakes up as his usual self. Still, he has the pages he was able to write, which he takes and turns into his publisher. She is understandably shocked, by the time he gets home, he already has three voicemails from the publisher, saying she loved it, realizing there is no way he could get any more done without the help from NZT. Yet he goes to see Vernon at his apartment. When he gets there, he is greeted by a beat-up Vernon. He reveals that what he told Eddie before about the pills being FDA approved and tested was a lie. Eddie still wants more. Vernon sends him to run a few errands in exchange for more pills, which Eddie happily obliged to. Upon his return, Vernon's door is open and the place is a disaster. He calls out to Vernon, who is sitting on the couch, only to find that he has been shot in the head. Eddie panics and grabs a golf club and then calls the police. As he stands there waiting for the cops, he realizes whoever killed Vernon could only have been looking for one thing. He hurriedly puts on a pair of rubber gloves and begins searching the already ransacked apartment for Vernon's stash of NZT. He eventually finds a stash hidden under the oven, along with a nice stack of cash. Just in time for the police to arrive, he hides the pills and money in his pants before opening the door. He's taken down to the station for questioning while they're talking. Melissa calls and asks to speak with Eddie. She asks him about what happened and implies that she knows about Vernon's involvement with NZT. She refuses to meet and hangs up. As he is leaving the police station, Eddie notices some strange men he suspects are following him. He tries to subtly dodge them and locks himself in his apartment where he takes another pill and counts out the money he got from Vernon feeling empowered once again. Eddie goes out and gets himself a fresh haircut, new clothes, and finishes his book in four days. Proudly handing it over to his publisher, he continues to take one NZT tablet per day. Using the effects of the drug, he learned to play the piano in three days, became good at gambling, and learned multiple new languages. He began mingling with the right people and made friends in some high roller places, landing himself a job on Wall Street. This dude was living his best life. Working on Wall Street wasn't making enough money fast enough for Eddie, so he goes to a more, off the books, named Gennady, looking for $100,000. Deciding to up the dose, Eddie quickly makes a name for himself in the stock market, 
and in the media. With all the attention surrounding him, he lands a meeting with Carl Van Loon, a household name in the finance world. Eddie also has dinner with Lindy, and orders using his newly learned Italian. Wildly impressed with the new Eddie, the two begin dating again, more serious and passionate than ever. Eddie suggests that they move in together, which Lindy happily agrees to. Eddie notices a familiar man watching them again. Later that night, he watches out the window nervously, unable to sleep. He begins to feel dizzy and off balance. He turns around to find himself somehow in the hallway. Lindy stands in the doorway, putting her jacket on, asking if he's okay and why he's in the hall. Uh-oh. Eddie, at the meeting with Van Loon, seems back to his normal, enhanced state. Carl asks Eddie what his secret is, to which he responds, special medication. Well, he is in line. The meeting goes seemingly well, and he impresses Van Loon in some way or another. He gives Eddie a folder of company stocks and asks his opinion on their ride home. Through deduction, Eddie realizes Carl is planning a merger with Hank Outwood. Eddie points out some flaws in the plan Carl hadn't previously thought of, so he invites Eddie to another meeting the following day with a restructured version of the deal. After Van Loon drops him off, Eddie experiences another episode of lost time. He can't recall how he'd walked the last 20 blocks or where he'd been. He goes out to a bar, mingling, and ends up leaving with a woman for a passionate night in a hotel room. It's morning, and when he finally comes down from the NZT, he can't recount the previous 18 hours of his life. He becomes violently ill and goes back to his apartment. He finds out that he is out of NZT at his apartment, but still tries to look over Carl's files. Without the drugs, however, he has no idea what he is looking at. He tries to get out of the meeting, but his boss refuses to let him bow out. Eddie gets dressed and goes to meet Van Loon, but he is unable to answer any of his questions and has a hard time focusing, leaving Carl wildly unimpressed and thinking Eddie isn't the special case everyone thinks he is. He gets distracted by the news playing on the TV, covering a murder from the previous night of the woman he'd slept with at the hotel. Not being able to remember anything, Eddie reels at the thought of possibly having killed someone. He excuses himself from the meeting and vomits on the sidewalk outside. He gets a call from Melissa, asking him if Vernon had given him any kind of drugs. He picks up the phone and begs her to meet him. He realizes that there may also be other people that know about what he's going through. Vernon's other clients. He looks through Vernon's black book and begins dialing numbers. Out of all the numbers he called, three were dead and the rest were sick and in the hospital. He dials one final number and a phone nearby begins to ring, belonging to the man in the tan coat that has been following him. He quickly hangs up and runs away with the man chasing him. In his attempt to evade the man, he causes a massive car pileup, which offers him the opportunity to hail a cab and get away. He heads over to the diner to meet with Melissa, who looks like she's seen better days. She reveals that she also took NZT before, and her life also took a turn for the better, but that she stopped taking it because she was afraid of the negative effects. She tells him that she also got sick afterward, and that she found out about all the people dying because of it through Vernon. She walks him out and advises him not to stop taking NZT completely, but to slowly try and taper himself off of it. He asks if she knows who makes it, but unfortunately she doesn't. On his way home, he runs into Gennady, who has been looking for him to get his money back. They fight in the street, and Gennady finds one of the NZT tablets in Eddie's hand. He takes the pill, despite Eddie's protest, and forces him to go to the bank and withdraw cash to pay him. Feeling worse than ever, Eddie stumbles into Lindy's job and collapses in her office. She understandably panics and asks what's wrong. He tells her that he needs his pills and ends up telling her the truth about everything. Soaking up all this newfound information, she agrees to bring him the pills to help him. When she asks where they are in his apartment, he reveals that he has actually hidden them in her house. Not cool, man. Not cool at all. Linda goes back to her house and finds the pills stashed under a seashell decoration. On her way back to the office, she calls Eddie to tell him that someone is following her. The man in the tan coat gets out of the cab behind her and starts walking towards her. Just as he opens her door, she crawls out of the other side and runs. The man chases her through Central Park, where she runs into two larger men. She tells the men that the guy has been following her, and the two of them attempt to protect her from the creep. However, the man in the tan coat simply stabs both of them and continues chasing Lindy. In broad daylight, just like that, Lindy hides behind some rocks and puts the phone back up to her ear to talk to Eddie, who is still on the line. Eddie tries to calm her down and tells her to take one of the pills. She refuses and says taking a mystery drug isn't going to help her think of a way out of being murdered. Eddie convinces her to take one, and as soon as she does, 
she is able to map out multiple different plans to get away from the madman. She runs out into the ice skating floor and picks up a random little girl, swinging her around and using the ice skate blades to cut his face. She finally makes her way back to Eddie and gives him one of the pills, immediately making him feel better. The next morning, when Eddie wakes up, Lindy breaks up with him once again. He tries to tell her that he's going to stop taking the drugs once he secures his and their future, but she simply cannot be involved given the circumstances. Eddie watches her leave for the second time and notices Gennady standing outside his apartment. He goes down to meet him and Gennady demands that Eddie give him more pills, which he does, but recognizes that he can't continue supplying both himself and Gennady's habit. So, he hires two bodyguards. Now that he has his pills back, he meets up with Carl to redeem himself. Carl tells him that he'd written him off after their last meeting, but Eddie sent him some revised projections of stocks, which were so good, Carl fired some people for missing them. Just like that. Eddie was brokering for one of the biggest companies in history. He found that if he maintained an even dose of NZT and didn't drink any alcohol, the strange blackout ceased. He goes and has custom suits made with hidden pockets inside them so he can keep his pills on him at all times. He goes to a chemist to see if he can recreate the pills and offers him $2 million to get it done in six months. While he is out at a lunch meeting, Eddie spots the homicide detective watching him from the bar. He goes over to talk to him, speculating that he is following up on Vernon's murder. However, the detective informs him that a witness identified him as the man leaving the crime scene of the woman killed in the hotel. Eddie hires Morris Brent, the most lethal lawyer in New York. Morris has him out at the police station in no time. After a meeting between Van Loon and Atwood, Carl asks Eddie what he plans to do after the merger deal is finished. Eddie says he doesn't know, but implies he plans to move on. Carl chastises him for not having to have fought his way to the top of the ladder because of how smart he is, but that he is still far from perfect and has a lot to learn, and ends his pep talk by opening a line of company credit for Eddie. After he returns to find his hotel room completely trashed, Eddie goes and buys himself a shiny new apartment with top-of-the-line security features, boasting a hefty 8.5 million. Canadia walks up to Eddie on the street, and right away we can see that he has also capitalized on the perks of NZT. He tells Eddie that he wants 20 more pills next week, and threatens to tell Carl about Eddie's mix-up in the murder investigation if he doesn't bring him the pills. However, the next morning, Hank does not show up to sign the deal. His wife comes to see Carl, and informs him that the reason Hank didn't show up is because he is in the hospital undergoing tests, but that they still have every intention of going through with the deal. Carl and Eddie escort Miss Outwood out to her car, and Eddie is met with an all too familiar face. The man in the tan coat is Miss Outwood's driver. Eddie realizes that the person that has been trying to get the NZT pills from him is Hank. Back down at the police station, Eddie is put in a lineup for the witnesses to pick him out of. In the end, the witness couldn't pick Eddie out reliably, and thus he is cleared. Eddie rushes back to Carl's office, where the news is broadcasting the stock market in a frenzy, as rumors of the Atwood and Van Lude murder leak. We also see an angry Gennady waiting for Eddie. That never showed up. Carl asks Eddie where he's been, and if he's been talking to anyone that could have leaked the information about the deal. He also informs Eddie that Hank has slipped into a coma and is dying. Eddie struggles to answer Carl's question, as he begins to feel pain from not taking his NZT on time. He excuses himself to the bathroom to take it, only to find that they have gone missing from his coat pocket. Panicking, he goes back to Carl's office and is met with a hand-delivered package. He opens it to find the several hands of both his bodyguards. Now, that's not the friendliest present. At home, he turns on the TV and sees Miss Atwood giving a statement about the deal and her husband's condition on the news. She turns questions over to her attorney, Morris Brandt, confirming Eddie's suspicions that he was the one who stole his pills. The doorbell rings and Eddie makes his way to the door. He checks his security cameras to see that it is Kennedy and his goons. He goes to call 911, but has no service on his phone. This brings us back to the beginning of the movie, with Eddie on the ledge. Just as he is about to jump, he stops himself and remembers where he might have one more pill hidden. He goes back inside and begins tearing through boxes until he finally finds an old tin canister with a single pill left inside. Just as he is about to take it, Kennedy busts through his front door causing him to drop the pill down a vent. Eddie tries to run back to the ledge, but gets grabbed by one of the goons. They sit Eddie down in front of Gennady, who explains that he dissolves the pills and injects them so they last longer before taking his last dose. Eddie discreetly grabs a kitchen knife and hides it behind his back. When Gennady gets close enough, Eddie stabs him in the stomach, killing him. They both collapse on the floor, Gennady dead, 
and Eddie dying from a lack of NZT. With no other options, Eddie drinks Kennedy's blood off the floor, using the NZT in his bloodstream as a lifeline. When the goons return and find their boss dead, they turn to check on Eddie. While one of them is leaning over him, Eddie spits a needle into his eye, blinding the man. After a short scuffle in the apartment, Eddie is able to take both of them out and leaves. Atwood dies, and Eddie goes to the man in the tan coat, telling him that Morris kept the pills for himself. Now that his boss is dead, revenge against Morris was all that mattered. Eddie got the pills back. A year later, Eddie is running for New York senator and winning. His campaign manager tells him that there is someone waiting for him in his office. He goes in to see Carl Van Loon sitting there. Carl reveals that he knows about NCT and tries to pressure Eddie into his pocket by offering him a limitless supply. Now that he is partnered with the man who makes NZT, Eddie turns him down, revealing that he found a way to perfect the formula and prolong the effects without taking the pills. He's off NZT. He sends Carl off defeated before going to lunch with Lindy. The two have gotten back together again, presumably for good. Hope you enjoyed our summary. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos weekly. Thanks.